come on the computer. I'm recording this. You're on TV. <laughs> this is our. Hi, world. <laughs> this is our. Hey guys, this is our new TV show. I'm this little dot up here, and it's Pat. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, je- I'm jealous that you're, I'm jealous that you're wearing a tank top. Okay, mine's, oh yeah. Mine are, don't exist yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get closer. Um, <laughs> I'm so tiny. I want to be bigger. Wait, I'm going to put me over your face. <laughs> you just... <laughs> this is going to be so funny when you watch this. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> how's it going? I want to hear about, we never really got to talk about your bike race when you're on t- <laughs> banana oh. uh, when you're on TV. I'm eating, I, I'm eating too. Um, what'd you do today? Yeah, that was did, cool. did you race? Um, no, we had, uh, uh, the team had like eight guys out, like cap four through me and, uh, we did, did a six-mile loop with, like, it's got a climb and then, like, some crosswind and then a sprint finish. We just did race simulation. Cool. It was fun. It was fun. I liked it. How many, so how many people were out there? Um, I think we had eight for, like, four laps, and then we had, like, six for a couple more laps. <clears throat> and you can run it. If you run it one way, it's a flat, like, crosswind sprint finish. If you run it the other way. You finish in a different part as an uphill stop ahead Sweet. sprint. So you get kind of a variety of scenarios. That's awesome. Yeah, it was fun. Um, dude, today but, was uh, so hard. Yeah. Yeah, today was 400 I wish, for two hours. So I'm actually going to highlight this right now. I wish you could see the screen, but... um. So this is right where the race starts, and I'm going to start the interval here. So first, yeah, so first first 30 minutes, so I'm at minute 28, it's 426 normalized power, Uh, 45 minutes in, 405, an hour and three, 402. Uh, and people can just, people can watch in the bottom left. You can just watch the NP number. Uh, hour 33, 392. Basically, long story short, you keep watching it. 390, 390, 390, 390, 390, 390, 386. Uh, and it finished up at like 375 at three hours. So, dude, what happened was there were... A bunch of people that we didn't know, which it, it was exciting because Bloomfield is usually like local people. There's a team from Montreal. The There's a team from how many total? Twenty five. So still small, wow. still small, still small. <clears throat> which is dangerous. There's no one. There's gonna, if you miss the break, there's not going to be people chasing. It's over. Yeah. So you know we <clears throat> wanted to have we wanted to try and stack the break, have more than one person in it, and. Um, yep. The race I can describe in less than a minute. Uh, there was one triathlete there, former triathlete. He's from Maine, and he had a team. There was a guy, a team from Canada. There was another guy from Lancaster, PA, who I guess now I know is a former pro triathlete. And uh, so first lap. Um, John gets up the road and Corey Coons gets with him and this one triathlete guy. And we're like, okay, cool. Like we're going to monitor that. And the other guy from Lancaster PA takes off and I'm like, I messed up cause I hesitated cause it's like, if I go, then everybody goes and John gets the road. And I thought there was, there was like five guys from BBC um and they weren't in it yet they actually were at some point i guess had a guy up there i don't know he was never up there because i'd asked for help later on like we have a guy in the break i'm like no offense but there's no way you have a guy still in the break this guy i guess never was up there i don't know never connected so Hmm. this guy takes off and so i take off after him there's probably 20 bike lanes between us 
and it's on the back side of the course. So after the long downhill, so it's like some like stair steps, if you remember the course at all. And um, dude, I'm not not closing in on him. We're keeping the same gap. I'm like looking down, just trying to crush it. And he, I'm like, he cannot get to them before I get to him or this is gonna be really bad. He gets to the three of them and just jumps over all three. So when he does that, Corey jumps on his wheel. So then the other triathlete goes around John and John gets popped. So the three of them are together and I get brought back and we're like, this is bad. Two triathletes together oh, on that course. So we immediately, yeah. me, Sean. So it kind of almost came back together and then it just went poof. And then we never saw them again. It went, oh, dude. So that chase, that chase, that that is, that is me chase. That that those are the watts chasing with two other people, with John and Sean. It went mm-hmm. from a minute, and in one lap they had two fifteen. I mean, we're going twenty, so over two hours. We're averaging twenty three miles an hour on that course. That's seven thousand feet of climbing. Yeah. Um. That's crazy. I guess Corey said the one guy did 90% of the work. He's gearing up for Gila. Uh, the guy that I – that's clearly why I could not follow him. Uh, just super strong and just shredded everyone. But that's insane. To, to normalize 400 watts to be with two other people. It's not like I was on the front the whole time. I was doing a good well, amount yeah. of the work. But there's still – you have, you know, some downtime. Which is why the nor- why the average power is so much lower, like three at the end, three hundred watts. Yeah. <clears throat> so we I got mean, even with one, even with the tiniest little bit of rest, that guy still that's a huge advantage when you're that strong and off the road. It's a huge advantage huge. to be just consistently going. Oh, I'm shot. I kind of want a beer, but it was actually good, man, because it was like. Uh, you know, there's definitely times in those races when it's like, wow, we are getting blasted right now. Yep. Was all that basement time worth it? And then that that's a good thing about power. It's like, oh, pff, dude, I laid it out there. Like, you did what you could. Focus on the yeah. goal. The goal is July 1st. That's the only yeah. thing that I care about. So yeah. that's a good reason yeah. and, to train. And you, have, I mean, you, haven't even, you haven't even begun to put out race intensity, really. I know that's what Dave said. He's like, dude, it's the first hot day and you're going that hard, but it's not even, I don't know. That doesn't bust. It was 70. It was great. It wasn't like it was scored. If it was 85, yeah, kind of I don't do well on that. But. Story. I, I did not do well. Yes. Yesterday it was, it was 85 when I rode and <clears throat> it killed me after my first interval. I was toasted. Yeah. That's hard. Did, did not ride well. But today was fine. It was 85 again, so, was, you know, you get used to it quickly. How do you feel that you've adapted since being down there? So you've been there for, what, three and a half years? Is this the third summer of riding? Because when did you move there? You moved in this the winter? Is, uh, I moved... For the fall? Um, <clears throat> fall. Yeah, or just before, the end, towards the end of summer, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely do well. It just depends. You have to ride. There's a huge difference between 80 and 90. And in, and honestly, probably about the same difference between ninety and ninety five. Like it just Huge. gets that much harder the hotter it gets. Um, and I made it a point in the middle of last season, especially to ride in the heat of the day um, when I was prepping for races, because most of the races are in the heat of the day. And it definitely helped. Like there was definitely an Oak Ridge. Like I rode away from the break because I was not bombed from heat. Yeah. Was, I was more used to it than everybody else. I could tell. So, what do you think about nationals, though? That race is at seven a.m. That is. That's why I put it at seven a.m. They didn't do. The they heat. didn't do that in Augusta when it was a hundred and seven degrees and people almost died. Yeah, that's crazy. So like, maybe you, somebody complained or they somebody brought it up. I guess. Yeah, they're not smart. <clears throat> yeah, so that's yeah. The U twenty three races in the heat of the day, though. Which sucks. Yeah, that's... We have a couple guys doing that. That stinks. Huh. Kyle's but doing that? Doesn't... Kyle's doing that. Hey, Kyle. Um, I actually sent him a Facebook message, which is kind of funny because I don't know him <laughs> except for the dogs. And you all was like, dude, 
you are killing it this season already. It's like every time I look on Facebook, it's like Kyle won golden Kyle seventeen won. races. Kyle podium. Dude, he's he's a rock star. He's he's got that ability to be in the right place at the right time. He he's got a six, that six like bike racer six yeah. sense. It's awesome. That's cool. It's good team. Yeah, we're still we're still figuring our thing out, but you know we'll we'll get there. Um, yeah. That's what we're doing. We had Sean learned a lot today, um, mm-hmm. which was good. Just like, you know, and that's actually what I love about Sean is we were talking before the season started and I was like, you know, how do you feel about joining a team where, you know, our goals are obviously number one, win the race. Number two, if someone who's a cat two can win the race to help them upgrade, that's even better. But I'm like, how do you feel about joining a team where, our biggest upgrade, our biggest concern is not you upgrading. And he's like, dude, I just want to learn. And it was like, that's an awesome yeah, answer. It's like, that's yeah, how you're going to upgrade, upgrade by learning and being yeah. smarter. Yeah, and, the upgrade by, by racing and being smart. And yeah. Getting a better awareness. Positions. We had some funny moments. I won't out them, but we had some good laughs after the race. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, dude, tell me about the race last weekend, McClellan. Because I really, oh. we got to chat about that very briefly through text message, but like, <clears throat> so where, this um, is in Alabama? It's in, uh, Fort McClellan's like a ghost town outside of Anniston, Alabama. Anniston, okay. And it's the, the first NC, NRC race of the year. So, you know, big teams were there. Um, I... Yeah, I felt I felt good. I felt pretty good going uh, up the climb the first time and over the KOM climb. <clears throat> Last year, Hincappy just put on a clinic. They separated the group into two after the first lap, after the first climb, and then on the KOM climb, like seventeen guys rode away, and they pulled like eighty guys. This so is, eighty this guys is, just got placed by last year. Last year. So I'm thinking like. Okay, there's a very strong likelihood that this could happen again because the same guys are there, you know. Um, so I foolishly decided to mark a, a good move after a break rolled of like four, and I marked this one guy on the descent before we were about to hit the Baines Gap the second time, and. We rolled, it was me and one other guy, and a guy from 706 Project, Frank Trevieso, and some other guy I didn't know. And as soon as I pulled through, I looked back, and those two guys were sitting up. I was like, what the heck? So Trevieso set up? I, Cause what's that? Frank Trevieso set up? Trevieso set up. I think it's because I, I didn't have a jersey, or I was in somebody you recognized. You yeah, ride. yeah, yeah. Because I saw, and I was like, yo, that, he's with that he's dude, that he's fast. Before. And then I was like, wait, it's just Pat. No! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's done that to me in other small races, too. Whatever, it's fine. Um, so I'm like, oh, man, I'm screwed. And I'm like, I'm coming down the break. The gap was like 20 seconds, 15 seconds, 12 seconds, 15 seconds, 18 seconds. I'm like, oh, shit. And I'm starting to blow up because we've just done really hard five-minute climb and then really hard, like, five-minute climb. Was this on two and, and like, the... Was it towards the end of the of the lap? I'm looking at the map here for people because there's the big climb in the very beginning. You come down that, and then yep. you've got like a big climb with a kicker and a climb, and then it goes down. There's like a couple other like I don't know if the, are those hill like rollers. I, I got away right after the kicker after the KOM, so like still descending back into town, about to start lap two. Oh, like, about okay. About to roll. So so I roll up Bane's Gap. I'm like 5K from the top of Bane's Gap. And I'm like holding a, probably like a 10, 15 second gap. I'm just hoping. Product placement. Uh, Nail gene. <laughs> hydrate. Got to stay hydrated. Hydrate. Um, I, I just kind of stayed within myself because I figured I wasn't going to connect to that break. I just wasn't going to. And um, like 600 meters from the top of the climb, Travis McCabe and two other guys came up. The field was nowhere in sight. And I'm like, oh, this is good. So, because Hincapie already had a guy up the road. And um, Estellas had a guy. And Estellas had another guy coming with Frank. And I 
think so. Hincapi had would have three guys in the break. Castellas would have two. There was a 706 project, this little kid um, who was climbing really well. And I jumped on the back and, like, went way deep to get over the top of the climb with them. And um, we ended up connecting with the break, and we rolled for a little while, but it wasn't – super organized and it just never and then like four guys bridged up to us and then it got so big um but i was like in survival mode after the after that climb like i got over the next climb fine but that's actually the second kom climb is when the two hinkyappy guys rolled they just estella's kind of let them go and i'm like i saw it happen i'm like i can't i'm not gonna this isn't my job at this yeah. point like i made the break i will contribute but i can't do everything right um, and then it kind of all ended up coming back together and i made it over a couple more climbs and then i just don't have 90 miles of racing in my legs i haven't been training for that wow. to this point i mean so it is what it is i kind of yeah <clears throat> my, my legs gave out a little bit around like 65, 70 miles, but it was fast. It was really hard. Um, yeah. Lesson learned. The takeaway I have from that is if you're doing a race, that's all climbing. The only time you want to make any effort is on the climb. Yeah. There's no point in between in the tailwind or yeah. in the headwind or on a descent, like, cause there's, it's a big enough race and there's enough teams you you want to mark the climbs and and be conservative. Otherwise. Yeah, does it otherwise. look like after and it was on the TV, so it's hard to tell sometimes. But like after the first climb, that whole flat section from like mile seven to mile five, like that eight miles before you start climbing Tail again, end. it looked like you guys were ripping it. Just like everyone's fast. flying. Every it was fast. The tailwind, it's pretty rolly, but it's it's. Fa- I mean, I didn't I didn't leave my eleven. Wow. You know, it was it was fast. So wow. it was good. Lesson learned. And I, I mean, legs were good. Um, and then how the next yeah. race go? Uh, next race was Hell of the South. Uh, that was cool. We did everything we wanted to get. Uh, we wanted to split the field more than form a break. So uh, Chatham got up the road with two others on the first climb. We all the group was coming back together on the third climb, and um, I was hoping Chatham would get over the top with those two guys, but they got caught kind of at the base of the climb. So I attacked, <clears throat> and two Canadians and Kyle um, and one other person came with me. The Canadians really pushed the pace hard, and just it shattered the group. Where in Canada so we had were they a from? Break. Um, Quebec. Area. They're what, what called um, um, the Lowenstrats lowest rate team. Lowens. Lowen, Sounds Belgian. Hold on. It's they're cool, man. They're it's a bunch of U twenty three guys. They're um, they're getting strong. They're you know they they rode really well. Apogee, Apogee lowest rates. Okay. Lowest lowest strats. <laughs> <coughs> Donker strat. Um, Smackleg. So. Yeah. Mm. Let's get donor um. and breeds. <laughs> nah. uh, Nashville needs a donor place. Is there not one? There's got to be one. No Turkish people. Uh, I haven't found a good one. I haven't found any one, but certainly there must be. <clears throat> anyway, bike we'll race. Wrap it up really quick. Um. Chatham and two others came up to the break. We got a group of, it was, a, I guess now seven, but everybody was doing, contributing. It was even and fine. And then on the KOM climb, the second time around, I attacked again. Two came with me. That was every, it was, that was it. We were gone. And then after the rough climb, Snake Creek, I flatted and that was that. And then, how did you, how did you how did you like your chances out of that group? Uh, I would have won. Could have. I won. had the best finish. I would have won. I'm very very confident. I had a, the best finish of those two guys. Well, I, yeah. next year. 
up a up, up a hill, up a short up a short hill. So it ends uphill. Yeah, they changed the course this year. Up, it's like up like a one and a half k climb. It's an awesome course. It's an awesome course. That would have been nice to win it again because it's a different course. Yeah. Huh. Ah, that's okay. I won the TT later in the afternoon. Less which was exciting. Cool. By, by Sorry. One second, but agreed. <laughs> but by one second, that's exciting. That's really cool. Wow. Yeah, and I was I was the only person who rode a TT bike. So you're not the fastest. The other guy was. (laughs) 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 That's hilarious. You just outed yourself. Dude, I was like in the race. I'm like, did these guys get on time trial bikes? Because I'm going as hard as I can. And they're just like literally. I'm like, we might get lapped at this point. But, yeah, it was funny. Some guy at miles, so the race is 68 miles. It's like mile 60. And he's like, dude, pull through. And I was like, I've been chasing for 55 <laughs> miles. Where have you been? Get out of here. No, Shut I mean, <clears throat> you know, there was, yeah, that's a problem with this small field. There weren't too many other people to help. There's always the people that don't want to help. And if you're not, if you don't have teammates, I don't expect you to help. But mm-hmm. live and learn. <clears throat> that's tricky, man. It sucks to not be in the break. <laughs> Talk about product placement. How about those kits, man? How about <clears throat> that chamois? Amazing, Dude, those right? shorts. Pretty amazing. Unreal. And Unreal. actually, I haven't gotten to tell you this, and I don't know if Dave noticed. You guys like to make fun that I wear my shorts really high. I can wear these ones even higher. <laughs> <laughs> They're... Uh, Eric Gill came up. He's like, yo, man, you got to work on that tan line. And I was like, I'm going risky for the first couple rides because there's like <laughs> this much of like stark white. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Going to try and get that burnt, burnt real quick. But um, cool. Well, what's your next race? Uh, this Saturday, coming Saturday, Aaron Schaefer. It's, uh, it's a lollipop. If you go out and back, do this loop with the – five minute climb like three times and then back um i haven't done it in two years so it should be interesting fields are fields are large normally it's around 60 guys there's nothing until may 1st here hollenbeck's which is small turkey hill i might try and go do may Um, 1st man it's middle hill cedar hill was good cedar hill was a good race when was that you'll like that one next year that was sunday Last Sunday, I got third. Wait, did we talk about that? Nah. That's cool. I didn't. Even, no, well. I, I mean, guess. I'm trying to be nice after I was like, your time trial win sucked. <laughs> but dude, check this trophy out, man. It's a sweet trophy. That is pretty cool. Yeah, it's cool. I just threw out. So I actually had a bunch of bicycle chains that I was keeping and I was going to make in my backyard for like a plant or something. If you took a chain and slowly connected them and wrapped them around and around and around, you could make a pot out of it and it would perfectly drain. Oh, cool. But I'm not dragging that shit with me. So I threw them out and uh, I had a lot of cogs. We could have made that. Oh, well. I'll start collecting them again. New chain every two weeks. Yeah, well. It won't, won't, take, yeah, it won't take that long. It won't take long. 8,000 miles. Uh, um shoot. yeah well that's all i got cool i'm gonna go study for midterm i'm gonna go uh buy some outdoor furniture Ooh, my porch. that's too yeah. bad i was just giving some away i can't zap it to you oh wait there it is it worked <laughs> that'd be awesome all right well this will be fun when we can do cool, this in man. person cool yeah Cool. Huh? All right, man. Swedish. I'll talk to you later. I'll probably call you right now. All right. Bye. Okay. <laughs>